Good afternoon and welcome to Bariatric Friday. My name is Kamal Erkan. I'm the chairman of American Surgery Center. Uh, I'm here with Dr. Isaiah Ergal. Dr. Ergal, how are you doing? I'm doing great, uh, Kamal. Uh, thank you for having me ready again for another wonderful session of Bariatric Friday. Absolutely. And uh, so you're done seeing patients or are you still uh, this lab more patients? I am. I, I am I, thank you. Good. So, um, as uh, as we do it every week, so we pick up uh, pick one of the topics and then um, uh, prep our patients with the process and try to answer questions. Uh, today we are going to cover the day of uh, bariatric surgery. So what to expect uh, on that specific day uh, before you come to the surgery center during the surgery center uh, time uh, and right after uh, immediately you leave the center. So the day of the day of bariatric surgery is uh, what we are going to cover. So as uh, as our patients uh, are going through a long process prior to the surgery with the screening uh, that we have in place, so this can be anywhere from two to three months, and so many different appointments are already completed, now it's time to have the surgery. So prior to the day of the surgery, we have a surgical clearance appointment. That's usually two weeks before. And then that two weeks is uh, usually patients are with the special diet, uh, with the new direction diet, so which helps uh, uh, the liver to get smaller, and that's going to make the surgery less. Um, uh, it's going to decrease this uh, complication uh, issues. So then we are already pretty much in touch up to the point to the surgical clearance. And now we want to kind of cover the day of uh, the surgery. So Dr. Ergal, what can we expect and uh, what should we be looking for on that day? Absolutely, Kamal. Um, so I was actually driving back and listening to your previous session and you were um, introducing the topic for today. And you mentioned the fact that for many patients, uh, uh, emotionally, this day is a mixture of emotions. So on the one hand, they are obviously um, anxious uh, because they are going to have surgery. And uh, on the other hand, they are excited because it's um, the uh, completion of a long journey that they have started perhaps months ago in order to undertake uh, uh, bariatric surgery to treat uh, a morbid obesity, which for many has been uh, essentially a major, major problem, not in, ter in terms of their quality of life, uh, the burden of the weight itself and the struggles that they've had over the years trying to shed it, uh, but also from a health point of view, many of them will have started medications really that are directly, uh, to, for diseases that are directly related to the obesity. So it's an important day from that point of view. And that mixture of emotions is actually completely normal and expected. And that's what I tell our patients when they tell me that as I approach them uh, in the preoperative area before the surgery. So it is useful to look at the uh, day of surgery uh, at our bariatric center, at the American Surgery Center, in three phases, essentially. There is the preoperative period. There is the actual operative time uh, in which the patient will be completely asleep under anesthesia. But then there is the post-operative uh, recovery area in the surgery center. Uh, and as you mentioned, this all occurs within a single day, essentially, as the vast majority of our patients are actually operated on at the American Surgery Center as outpatients, in other words, they do spend the first night after surgery at home rather than uh, within the center. If we do need to keep them overnight, of course, we have the capability of doing so, but we haven't uh, had the need to do so for actually uh, probably a couple of years now, if I recall well. So starting from the uh, you know, pre-operative time, they uh, are obviously arrive at the designated time at the surgery center. And many obviously will have had instructions from our surgery center, perhaps the day before or a couple of days before about exactly what to do before coming to the hospital. And one of the things we ask them to do is actually to take a, a couple of extra strength Tylenol tablets at home with a sip of water before arriving to the center. Now this uh, sounds counterintuitive to many, uh, 
saying I have to take a pain medication before the actual surgery. Uh, but it does make a lot of sense. So perhaps uh, the most important development that we've seen in surgery come out, particularly in the way we perform it, is this is enhancers, enhanced recovery after anesthesia. In other words, preparing the patient to have the least discomfort possible after the surgery so they can be up and about very shortly. In fact, we wouldn't be able really to accomplish what we're doing right now, sending patients home after major surgery the same day, if we didn't have this protocol in place, which allow us really to control pain very, very well, to control nausea very, very well, and to control and to get patients really to wake up from surgery fairly, fairly quickly. So they take those two tablets, in other words, uh, as part of the priming of our body to uh, have less discomfort after the surgery. So they will take those two tablets with a sip of water and they will come to the center and after being registered and enter the preoperative area, they will have an IV starter for, uh, to have antibiotics and other medications. One of the more important medications that is administered in that preoperative period, Kamal, is a medication to minimize the risk of blood clots. Uh, it's a blood thinning medication that is injected with a tiny, tiny, tiny needle, either in the belly or in the thigh of the person. And usually this occurs about an hour and a half to two hours before surgery. And when we do that, we decrease considerably the risk of uh, blood clots, which used to be uh, the bane of their existence to our predecessors who saw, you know, 20, 25, 30 years ago, a very high level of blood clots after surgery. But we are able to minimize that in part by doing that and in part by applying special boots on the legs of the patients, again, in the preoperative area or in the operating room. So they circulation in their legs is happening, although the patient is immobile because they are under anesthesia. So important preventative measures that we have adapted as a protocol and all our patients will go through that. And that's part of the reason we have excellent outcomes and high levels of safety in our surgery center. The patients obviously will be seen by our anesthesiologists who, by the way, will have seen the medical records of our patients days before, but they will be meeting the patient at that time to explain more about what anesthesia entails and also to set the expectation of the patient in terms of what will happen in the operating room before the surgery as they go to sleep uh, you know, under anesthesia. After that process is completed, and that can take an hour, it can take uh, two hours, and sometimes a little bit longer, the patients will be going to the operating room, and they will have met all the operating room staff. They will have met the nurses, which is, of course, the anesthesia team. Of course, they've met their surgeon and know their surgeon for some time, but they will also meet the scrap tech, the person who will help it, be helping the surgeon uh, at the time of the surgery by preparing the instruments that are needed for the surgery. And then uh, last but not least, they will also have met the surgeon's assistant, which in our case is actually Stephanie Cavalier, who is our physician assistant, and they will have met her as well before the surgery. So they will have met all the members of the staff who are dedicated to the uh, surgery for that uh, day. So uh, that person, that patient will be the center of the surgery center's attention during that time. We specialize in bariatric surgery. That's what we do. So bariatric surgery is not just one of 10, 11 disciplines that we have, like it may happen in the hospital, but that is really what we do. And the vast majority of the staff within our center are really tuned in to the bariatric patients in our center. So what happens at surgery? Most of the surgeries will take about an hour, maybe an hour and 15, sometimes an hour and a half. That's really the length of the actual surgery from when the surgeon starts doing the surgery and then complete all the steps of the surgery. And then the patient will be rolled back to the uh, recovery area. One, Can we do this? So since we are yeah. going the duration of the operation, so let's say um, if the patient is uh, like the first patient that we have, uh, they usually in the uh, they come to the surgery center around six, I believe. So to get to the OR, um, that process about one and a half. About hours. one and a half hours, absolutely, absolutely. Like, yeah. If you are at the surgery center at six, uh, that that means we expect you to be in the OR between seven thirty and eight. 
That is correct. That actually happens almost always come out fairly uh, um, predictably. And then, then one hour the surgery, and then now we are in the PACU. Um, yeah. But I don't know if you, uh, I don't want to interrupt uh, the flow, but I just want to make sure that patients, because we get this question all the time, how their process is. So if you come at six, then it's going to be uh, like seven thirty eight. you are going to be in the OR. If you then, the next patient, uh, maybe if you come at eight, let's say, that means uh, nine thirty ten is the yes. OR time. Absolutely. But, patient is discharged uh, six to eight hours after the uh, operation. That so is now correct. We can go back to the OR. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So the surgery is completed, whether it's the gastric sleeve, whether it's the gastric bypass, whether it's the gastric band, the procedure will have been completed at this stage. And then the anesthesia um, personnel are in charge of waking the patient up, essentially. And uh, they do that, obviously, in extremely... Uh, protocol-driven manner. They honor all the steps and they individualize them to the need of the patient. And uh, because of the way we prepare patients before the surgery by giving them the medications I mentioned, uh, Kamal, but also at the time of surgery, we actually apply uh, strategically numbing medicine to certain areas of the body that supply the nerves of the abdominal wall. Right. So even though the patient will have had some cuts on their skin for the surgery, very often they will be waking up with very little, if any, discomfort at all. And I can tell you in my, uh, you know, many years of doing surgery, it is only since we've started doing this protocol that I see patients waking up from surgery without a frown on their forehead. Right. They look comfortable, you know, in the past, you know, of course, when I was a uh, a resident, a trainee, you know, the patient will be in so much pain as they wake up and the anesthesia team would try to give them medications for that pain. The medication would be a narcotic often, so the patient would go back to sleep, but then their recovery will be delayed. Now we have none of that. In fact, uh, our anesthesiologists pride themselves for not really utilizing much narcotic medication during the surgery because of the beautiful way we are able to uh, provide anesthesia that doesn't affect their ability to wake up from anesthesia promptly. So the patients will be waking up promptly and the same team that cared for them will be around their bed as they are waking up to transfer them to the um, uh, transfer bed to take them to the recovery area. In the recovery area, there will be a slot with a nurse dedicated to their care, that single nurse that will be taking care of them throughout their recovery time. And she will have gotten a report from the operating room team about the condition of the patient and uh, how well they are doing, uh, what their vital signs are, if there are any things that they need to focus. With that report in mind, they will be waiting for them in the transfer stand, then from the operating room to the recovery room. In the recovery room, the monitoring of the patient will continue, particularly monitoring their vital signs like their heart rate, their blood pressure, their oxygenation level, second to second. This is called continuous monitoring, essentially. And as I mentioned, there will be a uh, nurse, a fully uh, certified and qualified nurse, which uh, is uh, uh, specializes on care of bariatric surgeries that will be there to take care of them and to look after them. And as they start to wake up, there is going to be a protocol for them actually to get some liquids by mouse, to get up and walk, uh, to go to the bathroom, all things that happen actually within a relatively short period of time, again, due to the fact that we are utilizing this protocol that allow the patients to go to sleep for anesthesia, but wake up from anesthesia and recover for fairly promptly. Now, we are very, very um, happy to be able to achieve this level of quality of care of our patients in our surgery center. But beyond our satisfaction, there are actually other important and tangible advantages to this come out. Uh, if you think about the complications patients can have after any type of surgery, one of them is blood clots, right? Uh, mm -hmm. One of them is decreased uh, oxygenation and being too sleepy because they are not coughing very well. One of them is pneumonia because they are not breathing deeply enough by themselves. But if you can get patients to be up and about early after surgery and you get them walking, that is actually by far one of the best ways to prevent blood clots, for instance. Once one, one of the best ways to get 
to give patients to recover very quickly, um, uh, you know, because instead of assuming that uh, sickness role by lying in a horizontal fashion and being dependent on somebody else to do things for them, now they are in a vertical position, much more dependent, and their brain will acquire that recovery mode much more quickly, essentially. So although we do keep our patients in the surgery center for six hours after the surgery, they will actually have been very much awake and recovered and be up and about within a couple of hours after the surgery. Of course, some patients may have some side effects of anesthesia, or they may feel the gas from the laparoscopy and the nurse will be providing relief with appropriate medication as needed. The vast majority of the patients will not need anything else. We will be able to watch uh, our earlier session because we are gonna have new uh, TVs um, for those patients who are done with recovery and then they're just waiting to be discharged. So uh, actually get them for the post uh, uh, procedures uh, as well. Now, uh, the time uh, is up. Let's say we are now about to discharge a patient. When the patient goes home, what's the most important thing for them to do, especially in the first couple of hours? So we want them to continue to do what the nurses have been assisting them to do in the recovery area, and that is to walk frequently. Perhaps the most important advice I can give patients really is that they shouldn't go home and just lie in bed all day long. Of course, they can go to bed and lie in bed when they have to sleep. That's important. They can lie in bed or on a couch when they feel tired. And it is uh, definitely reasonable for them to feel tired as well. Having said that, we want them to have a a uh, schedule of frequent walking in their waking hours. So if they're sitting down and they've been sitting for 20 minutes, maybe they should get up and walk for five, uh, 10 minutes as they feel fit. Now, my patients should be able to do that by themselves. So although it's a good idea, a good practice for them to have somebody in their house, they should be reasonably independent when they go home in terms of really taking care of themselves, whether it's going to the bathroom or getting something to drink. Um, and uh, going talking about drinking, obviously we have a scheduled uh, set of instructions about progression of diet up after bariatric surgery. And the most uh, important thing right after surgery is for the patients to stick to what we call clear liquids. Clear liquids are things that they can see through. So, we want them to take that. We want them to take sips frequently because whichever surgery we've done, they will end up with a much smaller stomach, which right after surgery tends to be fairly stiff. They will not be able to grab a glass of water and just drink a lot at once. But what they can do is they can take little sips frequently, and that can make up for the fact that they're not able to drink a lot of water at once. Uh, as I mentioned, they probably will feel tired. So when they need to sit down, they will sit down. If patients have a sleep apnea and they have a CPAP machine, we actually want them to continue utilizing that. Uh, will patients go home with pain medications? Absolutely, but they're not going to be narcotic pain medications. We've moved away from narcotic medications except in rare instances. And the advantage for that is obviously, firstly, because uh, you know, overutilization of narcotics can be harmful, you know, even in the medium term. But more importantly, narcotics actually can delay the recovery of the person by making them more sleepy, by making them less likely to be up and walking, but also by slowing down the recovery of their digestive system and causing even more constipation. So going away from narcotics has been great in terms of enhancing the whole process of postoperative recovery for our patients. Now, how about um, the uh, like exercise? Uh, like, and again, we are talking about like the immediate uh, first couple of days. Um, are they able to walk? Um, let's say, you know, the way that I walk. Um, if I want to take a fifteen-minute um, walking break, am I able to do that on the first couple of days? Absolutely. Not only you're able to do that, but we are encouraged to do that. So patients ask me, when can I start exercise? Well, when they think exercise, very often they are thinking about going to the gym uh, and do some more vigorous type of physical activity. But in my view, 
exercise means movement, right? Because obviously when I'm sitting down right now, Kamala, I'm not moving. There is no uh, change of position. I'm not going from here to the door or anything like that. You're seeing me just standing, sitting here. That is more or less a sedentary position. That would be the opposite of exercise. But if I get up from this chair and walk towards where there is something I need, I am exercising because I am moving. So what we uh, want to emphasize to our patients is that, yes, there are going to be certain exercises that will have to wait until your recovery is more complete, but movement should start immediately once you are fully awake, which means that when they're home, we want them to be up and about. And even the day after their surgery, you know, they can walk around their house, their neighborhood and do it safely, of course. Now it is major surgery, so they are going to feel tired for the first few days and that is okay, which means that if they feel tired, then they stop and they take a rest. But then after they feel rested, we want them to walk again. That kind of frequent movement is what we call exercise, come on, and that's important. Now, as their recovery is progressing, then they will be able to do longer periods of walking, perhaps even more, uh, uh, you know, freak, more uh, uh, vigorous walking as well, right? Uh, they can start doing, they can start doing a stationary bike or a treadmill or even an elliptical. They can do that actually before they are seen for their two week uh, uh, visit. What is uh, something that has to wait until they are one month out from surgery, Kamal, is exercises that would uh, engage the core abdominal muscles. So obviously any weightlifting will do that. So weightlifting is limited to about 15 to 20 pounds. And can they play tennis? What's that again? Can they play tennis? No. <laughs> oh. No, so because obviously it, it, it may, yeah, it requires some vigorous activity of their abdominal muscles. Their core has to be strong to do tennis as well. Put any uh, stress on the abdomen, like that's pretty much that's, what That's it. right, yeah, because those wounds are very small, but they still need, need to heal. And unnecessary, you know, strain on the wounds is obviously not encouraged at this stage. So weightlifting, core abdominal muscle exercises like sit-ups, crunches, and planks, those have to wait until they are about a month out from surgery. Having said that, as I say, they should be able to do all the other exercises gradually, right? And what we want them to do is anytime they engage in a new type of exercise in surgery, for instance, they want to, you know, they're five days out and they want to start doing the stationary bike, we would want them to start from a lower level of intensity and gradually build listening to the uh, response of their body, right? Some Somebody will recover, one person will recover more uh, quickly than another. This is just individual and we have to be able to be in tune with our body and listen to how our body is responding to any new activity. And, you know, the, um, uh, I guess the other thing is uh, because they will be going to the office uh, two weeks after the surgery for the first uh, post-op appointments, and then, then we have our regular um, uh, routine appointments. So many of the questions in between uh, can be directly answered in those uh, visits. But uh, one a really good place to get um, some of these questions uh, is our support group. Yeah. Uh, so once a month, uh, Dr. Win, uh, yeah, Dr. Gail Win is uh, doing this on a Tuesday at I believe 5 p.m. these days. So that's available on our website. Uh, patients can sign up for it. It's a private uh, Zoom event. Yep. Uh, but also uh, we discuss so many other things uh, like as we now, um, like, you know, each week we have different topics, but what we were able to do since we had so many different, um, uh, so many different uh, repeats, uh, now we have a specific uh, playlist mm -hmm. for each topic. So like this topic probably is the, uh, fifth or the sixth time so then you'll see them all together so anything that's post operative related you can actually watch those uh, videos but then Facebook support group is another private uh, place where uh, patients can actually uh, I, I think that that also can be important for emotional support uh, so that's a place where you'll see um, 
people who went through uh, what we are going through right now uh, or who are about to do what we are doing at the same time. So you may be having similar issues. So it's not common, uh, it's not uncommon to have certain issues after the surgery. So when you know that other people are also going through the same, that just makes it a little bit uh, easier. Um, so, but also, uh, you know, I see how uh, in the last couple of posts, uh, I see people are excited to get their surgery date. So like even for pre-surgical, uh, yeah. uh, it's a really good place to get uh, your mind ready for surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The follow-up appointments, we mentioned those are important. And in some cases, um, uh, the follow-up is with uh, CREA surgeons and providers, but we also have, uh, we may have nutrition uh, follow-ups uh, depending on the patient's um, uh, situation and they, they may need more help in some, some cases. Now, uh, also following up with your primary care also is very important. So um, they should be engaged and they should be part of your journey. Um, and uh, as you know, we are coming for these appointments, then we'll be able to uh, determine what may be needed uh, yeah. for the uh, future dates. So, um, any uh, anything that maybe on for this specific topic that we didn't uh, touch? Yeah, perhaps we should talk a little bit about the expectation as far as nausea or the feeling of being nauseous is concerned. That uh, that was a fairly common theme in the past and still is in some places. But we've been able really to minimize this problem drastically in our program because we've been utilizing strong anti-nausea medications that because they are expensive, they're not easily available in uh, big hospital systems. But uh, our surgery center was gracious enough to really provide that for our patients. So we give that anti-nausea medication before surgery. And then as needed, we give it after surgery as well. So in many places and programs, you will see patients having nausea right after surgery as a really major issue. We rarely see that nowadays, Kamal, which is really a huge accomplishment for us. And uh, nausea after any type of surgery is common because of the anesthesia, because sometimes uh, overuse of narcotics, but also surgery on the digestive tract can elicit that by itself as well. So it wasn't unusual, and it's not unusual in many bariatric programs for patients to really struggle with nausea for several hours or even days after bariatric surgery. We rarely see that in our program, Kamal, and that really makes uh, uh, a lot of difference in terms of reassuring the patients that going home, they will be actually fine because it is unpleasant if you have nausea and if it persists. And as I said, the reason we've been able to really control this problem so well at our center is because we're using very, very powerful medications that are not always available in hospitals, but we're able to give to our patients in the surgery center before surgery to really prime them to have less nausea, but also afterwards as needed. So that has been a uh, game changer for us as well in terms of really enhancing the recovery of our patients and get, uh, getting them ready to go home the same day. And, you know, we understand, uh, you know, nothing is easy, mm -hmm. right? So, um, that's why we have everything that we have in place. That's the main reason. So the most important, uh, uh, maybe one of the most important element is understanding the process uh, and uh, having the right people in the right places. And when we say this, some, in some cases, people really don't follow when, uh, as a surgery center, we are the most, um, uh, uh, we have the most expertise, mm -hmm. uh, not in just Delaware, but probably uh, in the United, Nation, United States. So uh, because the surgeons are, uh, it's the mix of the senior surgeons with junior surgeons so that you have that um, uh, really good uh, balance. Uh, so then if there's any need uh, from the senior guys, then you guys are available. Uh, anything new that the new guys may be a little bit, uh, you know, up to date on those, but that mix is important. But this is all we do. So bariatric surgery is uh, what we do. So it's not like at the same time, there are like 
five, six, seven other different types of surgeries are happening. And that's why the nurses are the most um, uh, expertise um, uh, in that, because every day that's what they do. So, uh, and that's why we are able to do this every day, every week without much preparation, because this is what we do. Like this morning, uh, the case conference was uh, more than an hour. So all we did is discuss different patients who are going through the same process. That standard doesn't change. So this means uh, the standard is there. So therefore, patients feel um, anxious or nervous. Uh, I understand, but there's no reason because yeah. you are in the best hands. And we are comfortably able to say this because uh, more than 400 cases a year and just in the surgery center, but total more than 10,000 bariatric cases. Yeah. So that's not an easy, uh, uh, it doesn't come uh, as easy. Um, and we work so hard for this so then we can make this uh, as safe as possible for our patients. So um, now we get you ready for the day of bariatric surgery and now you're in good hands and we'll follow up with the other topics um, uh, as early as next week. So we'll be back next Friday. Thank you for following us. Thank you for watching us and 